Good morning. Welcome back to Iowa. What's next? Uh, today we're going to dive into the wonderful world of tool restoration. What I've got sitting here is a very, very ancient, antique freaking uh, horse grooming tool, which are still available today. Uh, this is called a curry comb. And it's for grooming your horses or any of your large breed animals, cattle, whatever, if you're going to take them to, to fair. Uh, I'm not sure how old this is. I believe it is pushing the century mark. And as you can see, it is relatively beat to shit. This gets used all the time. Not daily, but it's, it's used a lot. And it's time to uh, bring this thing back to life make it look nice, make it more usable, because the handle is about ready to fall off the goddamn thing. Uh, what we're going to do today is start on disassembly so we can clean it up. Uh, all it is, it's just a brush. Clean animals. Uh, if you're sitting at home and you're watching this and you're seeing this metal freaking spring-loaded ring with all these sharp teeth on there, and you're getting on there and complaining how this is animal abuse, it's not. Do the world a favor and just shut the fuck up. This is not going to hurt him. See, I can put all kinds of pressure onto my hand and it doesn't hurt me. It's not going to hurt a freaking 1,500 pound animal out there that uses my barn to scratch its ass on. So let's get this handle off of there. I think what we're going to start with is we're going to cut this little tang off that holds the handle in place. We won't need that when we reassemble. So we're just going to take the I'm going to get my Dremel out. I'm going to cut this little piece off right here, and we'll slide the handle off, and then we'll start the rest of the uh, disassembly. Now, I've got some uh, rust remover coming. It's not here yet. It's supposed to be in today. Once we get this completely disassembled, this will go into rust remover for several days. So let me get my Dremel. Safety first. All right. Now, safety glasses are so fucking important when doing something like this. If any of you have ever gotten a piece of uh, steel in your eye, you're doing some grinding, and that little spark freaking flies up and embeds itself into your freaking pupil, you have no idea the level of pain that's involved in that. Every time you blink, there's like a splinter in there. It's like scratch, 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 and it sucks. And then you got to go to the doctor, and they numb your eye up, and then they get in there and they dig it out, and then you got to put all these drops in there. Uh, the last time I had it happen to me, uh, I ended up going home and I'm just burying my head in a pillow for about eight hours. My freaking eye hurt so goddamn bad after they they dug it out. So. Safety glasses when you're freaking grinding steel. And especially these little goddamn discs, they are prone to exploding. And as long as you get the safety glasses, you're fine. You might have the grinding wheel embedded in your forehead, but, you know, it's your forehead. Who cares? All right, so we got that cut off. So now we're down to this tang. Uh, it's obviously very rusty. We're going to have to do some straightening on it. It's kind of bent up. But I think we want to disassemble this the rest of the way. We probably won't reutilize that uh, ferrule. I think that, I don't know, that might not be what it's called. But there is a spring in here. We'll pull the spring back and we can, if we can get it to rotate around. It's got just like a little T head. There. With a retainer, just like that. Spring comes out. Got another freaking T head retainer on that side. Does this slide out? Yeah, there we go. That's out. Now, I'm not going to drill out the rivets that hold the actual comb together. Uh, we're not going to get that in depth. We're going to try and <clears throat> reshape this somewhat into a, its original freaking roundness. But here are our individual components. You got the comb, you have these two little retainer 
plates, your spring, and the handle. The handle needs a little bit of freaking straightening work. Let me get my... Alright, I think that's back to pretty much where we want it to be. You see, I need a punch. Do I got a punch? Let's restore these guys. Okay. I think I have all the components flattened back out the way I want them to be flattened back out. All right. So, last week I ended my video with the curry comb. I said I was waiting on my uh, rust remover to show up. That evening, it showed up. Uh, what I got was this stuff right here. Uh, Evapo Rust Super Safe Rust Remover. Uh, it is a completely non-toxic, biodegradable rust remover. I mean, it, it apparently, it's, you can stick your hands in there. It's not going to hurt you. You probably shouldn't drink it, but I don't know if it would necessarily hurt you if you drank it either. Because it's apparently completely non-toxic. Now, I didn't get it because it was non-toxic. Uh, I'm a mechanic, so my hands are submerged in freaking... You know, all kinds of damn chemicals all day, every day, diesel, grease, solvents. I got it because apparently it's extremely effective. And it's relatively inexpensive. A gallon of this stuff was, I think, $20 on Amazon. It's completely reusable, so when I'm done with it, stuff it back in the container, stick it on the shelf. I need to use it again. Great! Um, and I also got it because it is apparently odor-free. And I have a bucket of it sitting right here, and I can't smell anything from there's no nasty chemical smells so I can be out here in the shop which is completely sealed and not gas myself out with it uh, so the price and the fact that there is no odor were big selling points for me but it was also because it's supposed to be extremely effective last Thursday it showed up in the evening so I ran out here real quick filled this bucket up with the uh, the curry comb parts we uh, dumped uh, the evapo-rust shit in here until it was above all the parts. And the container says you only need to soak it for anywhere from 1 to 12 hours, depending on how deep the rust has embedded itself into the metal. These were pretty rusty because they're probably 70-year-old, 80-year-old uh, horse grooming tools. Curry comb. Uh, Thursday is my Sunday, so I had to go back to work. Uh, Tuesday I was busy, Wednesday I was busy, so now it's Thursday, it's been a full week that it's been sitting in here soaking. So now we can pull it out of here and have a look and see how well this freaking evapo rust shit actually worked. Now what I am going to do, give me a plastic bag, put it down, a couple of towels. Now, I am going to wear gloves, not because I'm worried about damaging my dainty freaking skin. It's just because I don't want to all the way back up to the house to wash my hands. When I'm done with this, I can just take gloves off and keep doing whatever I'm doing. All right. Now, if you remember what they looked like before I put them in there, that's what they look like now. They're actually down nice, shiny, gray metal. And we'll just use this little wire brush here and finish cleaning them up. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that shit freaking works amazing. Look how goddamn clean that got that. It's look brand new, freaking stamped steel. That's awesome. I am super freaking impressed with that rust remover. Here's the comb itself. This could be a little bit more of a challenge to clean up. A 
Uh oh. It removed so much rust that the rivets came out of it. And we're going to have to get new rivets. We will make new rivets. unfortunate all right so I got all the parts pretty well clean uh, we had an unfortunate freaking incident that there is a there was a weak line right here this area of metal is pretty freaking heavily pitted and it snapped on me so I think what we're gonna end up doing we're probably gonna overlay this and then I'll bronze it back together I don't have any bronzing rods here right now. So probably my next video is going to be to attempt to try and bronze this back together with a little bit of an overlay. And then we can pop rivet it back together. So, we should be able to fix it. It's not a huge freaking deal. It's just, it's another freaking layer of the video. So, yeah, so we're going to set this here. We've got this. And since this stuff is completely reusable, we're going to pour this back into that. All right. Uh, I am going to attempt to bronze this curry comb back together. I just overlapped it with the, about three teeth. Uh, took a wire wheel, cleaned it up really well, and I'm going to go ahead and give this a try. Now, <clears throat> I am a certified MIG welder, but as far as bronzing goes, I'm not even a fucking novice. Uh, I've done it a couple of times. Uh, we had a fuel line on a forklift at work that was cracked. We needed the forklift. The part was going to take about two weeks to get it in. So uh, they went and bought some bronzing rods and was like, here you go, figure it out. So I got some scrap steel and I started playing and messing around until I was comfortable, you know, putting down a, a little bit of a bead with the, with the bronzing rod. And uh, I used an acetylene torch at work to do that with and I ended up bronzing fuel line back together. And I've done a couple other little small little things, uh, fixed a couple of shit, but yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to do this. Uh, so it's basically, it either works or I ruin everything. But so if you're, if you're good at bronzing, if you do this professionally, whatever, I'm sure you're going to call me all kinds of wonderful names, but you know what? I don't give a shit. It's the internet. Everybody calls everybody fucking names. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a try. I got these bronzing rods, flux, uh, flux coated bronzing rods, and what flux is, is uh, I don't know. And then I've got a propane torch, but I got map gas in here. Map gas gets way fucking hotter than uh, regular propane. Uh, so we're going to give this a try. Let's see what happens.
Okay. It probably isn't the most prettiest freaking thing. I need to do a little bit more shaping right here. I got it. It's a little bit of, a little tweaky. Yeah. Not the best freaking uh, bronzing job, but I think it's solid. That should work. Now I can put this thing, uh, I can shoot this with some paint, put it back together, make a handle for it. Like I said, I don't know shit about bronzing, but I got it done. All right, we're going to... We're gonna freaking attempt to uh, reassemble the, the comb portion of this. I have some little copper rod here that we're going to use as the pop rivets to hold it all together. Uh, all of these are, uh, you can find it on Amazon, uh, knife handle pin. Is that what they're called? And I think I got the package. Yeah, it's just, it's called pin stock for knife handle pins. It's, if you're doing knife handles, you buy this stuff and you run it through the knife handle, pound it down. That's all this copper rod. It is 3 16 diameter copper rod. Now we have to try and get this shit all aligned. So we're going to start with uh, one of them guys. We'll stick her in here. Well, fuck. They didn't turn out perfect. But, uh, it will work. Alright. So, I got the curry comb all back together. And royally fucked up the, uh, the copper pins that I used as rivets. I cut them way too goddamn long, and when I tried to hammer them in, they did not mushroom out like I was hoping that they would mushroom out, and they kind of look like crap, but I guarantee you they're not going to come out, and I'm certainly not going to freaking grind them off and try and get them back out of there to redo it. We'll just chalk it up to a learning experience, and I got like three more of these things that I have to go through and, and redo. So hopefully the next ones will turn out better, but this is the one we're trying to figure shit out on. Uh, so now what we got, we got to figure out uh, a handle. What are we going to do for a handle? I think we're just, we're going to use the blood wood. And the way we're going to inlay this is we're going to cut two pieces of blood wood at our handle size. And they'll get sandwiched on top of this. And we're going to make a spacer out of something else so we'll have a nice freaking line through it. Uh, once again... I have this super thin, fucked up sheet of ash, but I think I can get some pieces off this outside that are going to be the thickness I want, because it just has to be the thickness of the shank on the handle. Box full of veneers. I'm going to take veneer out of here, and I'll put a layer on one side and a layer on the other when we glue it together, so you get a nice little added decorative line to it. So we want... Probably something relatively dark right here. We're going to go ahead and that is roughly an inch and a quarter. So we're going to rip a piece off of this at about an inch and a half. Do, do, do. Lengthwise, what do we want? Let's see. I need a pencil. We want this to extend about yay far. Okay, so now I need two pieces like that. I'm going to go cut two pieces like that. All right, I did an amazingly accurate job of cutting them exactly the same length. That doesn't matter. Okay, now we need a piece cut out of this and see if we can find one. Some of it that is relatively the same thickness. We're just gonna, we'll use the bandsaw on this guy because it's so freaking warped and nasty. 
All right, so we got the ash, which is pretty much exactly the thickness of the handle. Now I want, am I gonna get, I want two pieces of veneer to sandwich. All right, so our next step, we're gonna freaking glue these guys up, freaking solid. <clears throat> we're gonna do that, we're gonna utilize the big vise. That puts an awesome amount of clamping force. I need a couple pieces of scrap freaking wood and uh, binder pockets. Why do I need binder pockets? Because glue doesn't stick to them. Okay, uh, I don't know how sawdusty I look. I've been doing some power carving. This has been drying for a while now, and we can get it out of the freaking vise. Now, here is the reason why I use them binder uh, dividers, holders, because glue does not stick to them. Wood glue just, it will not stick to that stuff. So you can clamp it in there, doesn't matter how much squeeze out you get, it's just going to come right out of here. All right, so now we have our handle sandwich. That is just a freaking hair thicker than what our handle is going to be, which is fine because we're going to uh, epoxy it and pin this in. But now we've got to do, we're going to lay this on here, put it down, all the way up to where the handle is going to go. Make sure she's centered up all the way forward. Now we got the handle traced on there. We're gonna cut that notch out. Let me go cut that notch out real quick. Notch, handle, just like that. All right, two pieces of blood wood. Yeah, we won't need them spacer blocks, and we're not going to care if we mar this up. This is going to get turned into a handle.
Mm. All right, Curryco handle. Handle is all friggin' uh, glued up. Uh, got the slot for the handle in there. That slides in. We tap that in with a hammer. We'll epoxy it in place. Now we need to turn this thing. Uh, so we got to find center on it. All right, we got center. Now I think what I'm gonna do, just to try and cut down on the amount of wood that I gotta freaking uh, remove with the lathe, I'm gonna take this over to the bandsaw and I'm gonna remove some of this and I'm gonna try and, and I'm gonna knock these corners off. And then uh, we'll chuck this up in the, in the lathe and we'll make a handle out of it. Got the handle turned. Uh, now we got to epoxy the actual comb into it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this, I'm going to take this grinding wheel on the Dremel, and I'm going to notch this just a little bit, give this uh, handle some teeth. That way, when we put some epoxy on here and we drive it in there, uh, that epoxy is going to soak into the wood, but it's also going to get into the teeth of the handle and. Uh, Give it more surface area for that to, to, to fucking hold it in place. Um, where are my safety glasses? Wear safety glasses and use these goddamn cutoff wheels and the Dremels because these things have a tendency of exploding. And I've already been to the doctor on like five different occasions to have shit dug out of my eyes. I've got really, really bad luck with sparks and that winding up in my eyes. And my handle just fell on the floor. All right, let's mix up. Uh, I need, I need my vice. Lock that guy in. Pick our handle up that we knocked onto the floor. Uh, when using epoxy, you should wear gloves. I don't have any gloves. I ran out. So, we're just going to mix it up. We don't need very much because this thing is a really tight friction fit. Alright, <clears throat> so the curry comb project is done. Uh, I had another video that was showing what I did for f the, the finishing process and everything like that, but somewhere along the lines I lost the video. I don't know where it went. Not entirely sure if it got put in some fucking other file or if I accidentally deleted it, but it doesn't matter. The curry comb restoration is done. These are my other ones that I still have to freaking restore. Like. This one, the handle, you know, it's pretty well fucked. Uh, the head on it, it still looks pretty good, though. This one, on the other hand, the handle is still solid. The ferrule is coming off of it, but, you know, the comb itself is freaking breaking. But I can bronze that back together, as you've seen from, uh, you know, this video. Not that I can bronze it that well, but I can still put it back together I can restore this freaking thing so I got to deal with these two curry combs and then this is a modern day one 
It's not called a curry comb. It's the same goddamn thing. This is just called a shedding blade, but it does the same thing. It's just teeth. It removes all the freaking hair that's coming off. You know, uh, after winter, horses are going to start shedding. You just use these things to remove all of that excess hair, mud, whatever. So those have got to be restored. Here is what a brand new modern day one looks like. These guys are pushing 100 years old. And then here is my completed restoration. Like I said, uh, I really fucked up on the, uh, the rivets. I cut them too long, so when I tried to mushroom them out, uh, they just bent over. So that kind of sucked, but you know, it's a learning experience. Like I never done this before. Uh, when I do those two restorations, those guys are actually held in by bolts, but I'll probably do the same thing here. I will use the copper rod to hammer it together, but I will cut it to the length that I need it instead of how long I cut these. That was a screw up. I like the handle. The handle, I just use some spray urethane. Uh, I'm a little disappointed in the spray urethane. It leaves kind of a, uh, an almost a grainy texture. It's not as nice as it would be if I put on the, uh, the uh, can urethane. But it works, it got it done. The nice thing about the spray urethane is I could spray the comb itself and get a nice coating of urethane on there to protect it from having the paint coming off and, and starting the rust. But The difference between that guy and that guy. This one looks pretty close to brand new. This one looks like shit and needs a serious amount of restoration. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Don't forget, hit that like button. Subscribe. You should have subscribed at the beginning of the video if you haven't already. Subscribe. Laters.